I've been getting a lot of requests for the specific details on my home lab, so in this video, we're gonna take a tour. Let's go. I've been seeing it pop up more and more and more and more. What are you using to study for all of your lab preparations? What is the specific hardware that you're using to run EVNG? So I took a poll on Twitter and asked if you would be interested in actually seeing the stuff that I have. And then on top of that, I asked if you would be interested in having links directly to the stuff. So if you check out in the description below, you can follow along, so to speak. Those are affiliate links, and I'll talk about more about what that means at the end of this video. But you can click on those links and then explore a lot of the things, if not all of the things that I'm about to show you. So let's start by talking about the server. So here we have one side of the rack. This is a 12U rack, and if you're new to rack technologies, when you see these little holes here, three of them together make up one U. And the spacing between them varies a little bit when you jump from one U to the next. So you can't just put your stuff in any hole you please. It does have to align specifically to one U. So this is a 12 U rack. It's on wheels so I can wheel it around wherever I want. And then the server that we're looking at here is a Dell R710. Now the Dell R710 is kind of old. In fact, it's, it's really old at this point. I bought this server, I don't know, probably about four years ago at the price of 350 bucks. Now these servers come in a couple different formats. You can see here the disk drives that we're looking at here. There's four slots for disk drives on this particular server. These hold three and a half inch disks. Searching for a server, you can buy a Dell R710 or a Dell R720, but you want to pay attention to what size disks it will hold because they'll either be a three and a half inch bay or a two and a half inch bay. And the two and a half inch bay limits your functionality and capabilities quite a bit to, well, only two and a half inch disks. The three and a half inch disks, though, have the option of getting three and a half inch drives or two and a half inch drives. Here's one of those three and a half inch caddies I was talking about that can hold a three and a half inch drive. They're labeled on the side which holes you can screw your drives into. There are adapters that can come in these three and a half inch caddies that can form down to a two and a half inch caddy. So if you have two and a half inch SSDs, you can still use a three and a half inch server and just use the adapter to put two and a half inch SSDs. For instance, on my server right here, I have two SSDs right here and then a three and a half inch one terabyte drive right there. Now let's jump to the other side of the server and check out what's on the back of the server and the networking equipment. So here's the thing about the Dell R710. It's really old and in fact, they're really phased out at this point. On eBay, if you're searching for a new server for the exact same price or maybe even a little bit less than I spent on that Dell R710, now you can get the Dell R720s. R720s are getting pulled out of production racks as they're refreshed with Dell R730s or Dell R740s. So let's jump over to eBay and take a look at one of the Dell R720s that I recommend. So from eBay, I'm gonna search for Dell R720 here and I'll search for a couple things. I'm gonna search for 3.5, so it gets those three and a half inch bays and 64 GB, so it gets 64 gigs of RAM. And right here, one of the first one that pops up, I really like this, a Dell R720 three and a half inch server, two six core processors. So it's gonna have 12 physical cores, 24 threaded, then 64 gigs and eight trays available to us that you could actually use for storage. So you could use these trays to put things in like RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and so on. But the kicker here is just know that this doesn't come with any storage. You'll need to buy your own three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. And you may even wanna check the description to see which version of iDRAC it comes with or how many caddies it actually comes with. A quick way to get to those caddies that I'm talking about and the adapters is just go to my Amazon storefront here. You can check the description one more time. Go to Home Lab Equipment and then right here, kind of towards the bottom left, there's this three and a half inch caddy with two and a half inch adapter. I'll give that a click. And you can see we're looking at $16.99 for the caddy and the adapter itself that comes with it. You can take that adapter out so you're not stuck with it. You can use this caddy for a three and a half inch drive or a two and a half inch drive. Now I did mention that the server itself is running ESXi and because it's a Dell R710, it can't run the latest version of ESXi. It has to run actually ESXi version 6.0. Since then there's been 6.5, 6.7 and 7.0. But when you try and install those on these really old servers like R710, 
instance, it literally tells you your server isn't compatible with the processors that you've selected. So you can't install ESXi 6.5 on an R710, it punts it out. But you shouldn't have any issues if you bump up to an R720 or even an R730. Now you can see the specs right here. There's the 64 gigs of RAM. I've got 12 cores here and the speed is at 2.93 gigahertz. My storage section here, you can see I've got two SSDs that I've selected here and then the spinning disk that's available to me too. Having that one terabyte SSD is great because it's pretty quick and snappy. The networking section itself, uh, I've got two V switches that are set up here so that I can use two different physical NICs just to isolate traffic for my virtual machines. And when we take a look at my EVE-NG virtual machine that I have, you can see I gave it 24 CPUs and 48 gigs of RAM. And if I take a look at the monitor, well, it's not really doing much at all right now. When I start running an actual lab, I typically see the CPU jump up to 15 or 20%, depending on how many nodes I have on the topology and the RAM. It doesn't take up that much either. It takes up maybe 15 or 20 gigs of RAM when I have a very large topology. Another super important thing that I need to point out about these servers is it's running ESXi right now, currently version 6.0, because ESXi is free. And check this out, ESXi, once it's booted up, runs in RAM. So the storage that it lives on isn't very important. So if I actually open a little hood here, it doesn't like it when the hood's open, you can hear it fussing. But you see right there, right there, that little thumb drive? That's what ESXi is installed on. So now we're looking at the back of the server here. I've got the two power supply units and then the four ethernet ports for the server itself. You can also see the flashing lights above and then over here to the left a little bit, there is some fiber connectivity on this device. Now, one of the things that is missing on the server that I think is very, very important when you're shopping for a server is something called iDRAC iDRAC is how you can remotely access the console of this server. You can think about it like the console port on a switch just brings you in straight into the device. iDRAC is the console of a server that you can access over a network. So if something's going wrong with your server or you want to install a new operating system on it, you can do all of that over iDRAC. HP has a similar feature called iLO. Now let's move up to the network. Now we're taking a look at a couple switches here. First up, I have the old faithful Cisco Catalyst 3750G, these things are ancient, but man, they work great. That G stands for gigabit. So all of these ports here are gigabit ethernet. They can support PoE, but you do have to search for it and buy it. When you buy it, you can pick up these switches for pretty affordable, under a hundred bucks these days. And then we move up just a hair more and we have a Catalyst 3650, which is a newer switch. It's still, it's not even end of life and it runs iOS XE. Love the 3650 for learning things like software defined networking or network automation and programmability because these devices, if you have the right version of iOS XE, they can support NetConf and RESTConf. Sitting over here in a different pile in the room, I've got two EX4200 series 48 port PoE Juniper switches. Uh, these were for Juniper studies and when I was recording the JNCIA DevOps course for CBT Nuggets. I love these switches. Can't beat them. Huge bang for your buck. I'm eventually going to give these away and part of a giveaway on Data Knox's YouTube channel. Time to talk about books. I've got a lot of books here that are being used for my CCIE studies. They're part of the Amazon wish list that you can check out in the description. Um, this doesn't even begin to scratch the surface on the number of books that I have. And this is just tied specifically to my current Cisco studies. But I love things like automate the boring stuff with Python for when you're learning Python. I also love mastering Python networking. That was a great book to read too. I even love learn PowerShell in the month of lunches as well as as C Sharp 8.0 and .NET Core for learning that programming language too. Now my home network itself is all Unify. I've used Unify stuff for years. And if you follow Network Chuck or Jeremy Chari, you know about Unify stuff too, because they've been on that bandwagon for a little while now. I've got the Unify Dream Machine because I love that 800 megabits per second with IPS turned on. I also use Unify switches and Unify APs throughout my house too. Unify Dream Machine, a port Unify switch, and a little MacBook in case I ever have to do some client testing. It's also a PS4 Pro and a Nintendo Switch. Now downstairs we saw the Unified Dream Machine as well as an 8-port PoE switch. That connects upstairs to this Unify 8-port PoE switch along with a little Raspberry Pi. There's of course the actual PC itself that does all of the magic. There is a 
32 inch curve Samsung. And then if we look up, there's my Unify AP. So here is the Unify A port switch. If I pan down just for a moment, you'll also see a four bay Synology drive. This has done so much for me. It has acted as a file share and just network storage as well as served as an iSCSI target when I was going through VMware and Hyper-V studies and I needed to make failover clusters. So that way there was shared storage between my servers and I could then do things like vMotions or Hyper-V live migrations. Now last and most importantly might actually be the Boson exam sim environment where I have my practice exams ready to rock and roll. I've been using Boson for a really, really long time for years. In fact, if you go to my downloads, you can see I've been using it from the beginning with all of my Microsoft MCSE, Network Plus, the old school CCNP route. Yeah, I've been using Boson for years and my exam studying method has always been the same. CBT Nuggets, then Books, then Lab, then Boson. Now I'm gonna go into Boson a lot more as I get closer to taking the Encore exam. In fact, I'm gonna take one of these practice exams. We're gonna do a live stream called a study session and we can go through this practice exam together. But just know that this is a crucial, critical part to my studying process is loading up a Boson practice exam and just seeing how I'm ready to rock and roll with this. I particularly love Boson when you're in the study mode because you can click this show answer and it doesn't just show you the correct answer, it tells you why the right answer was right and why the wrong answers were wrong. You'll be super prepared after taking Boson practice exam. Now, about those affiliate links in the description. Basically, if you click those and purchase any of these products, I'll get a small kickback from that purchase. This ultimately goes into reinvesting in my channel so that I can do more stuff to make better content. Maybe that's lab equipment, maybe that's recording equipment, whatever the case is, that's the point. But if you don't click these and buy them anyways, I totally support that because I'm here to recommend these products for your success, not for me to make money. I'm putting up all of these in this video right now because I believe in these products. I'm currently using them in my own environment to help me get prepared for whatever I'm working on next. So that's been my lab environment. Thanks for stopping by y'all. I'll see you in the next one.